The Scimitar is Corsair's latest entry into the MMO gaming mouse market. Sporting a 12-button adjustable keypad, RGB lighting, and a solid build, will it be enough to overthrow the Razer Naga as my preferred MMO mouse? And will it be a step up from their previous and admittedly rather awful M95? Well, let's start off with the build quality. It is absolutely stellar. I mean, pretty much impeccable. The main body of the mouse has a comfortable, smooth surface, and the structure is very sturdy. The buttons are also quite good. It feels significantly better built than my Razer Naga, though it does have a slightly heavier weight, which might contribute to that perception. Visually, it might just be my favorite looking mouse. The yellow accents might be a little bit divisive to some, but I personally think they look fantastic. Now, comfort is key when it comes to designing a mouse, and I am pleased to report that they have done a fantastic job. Mostly suited for palm grips, the body fits the hand excellently, and it also has a well-placed pinky rest and a wonderful textured rubber grip on that side, which really does aid stability and make the mouse much easier to move across your preferred surface. Like most mice, it also does glide very well. The weight is also quite well balanced, unlike the M95, though I would like a degree of customization in that regard. While lifting it in an FPS is certainly possible and doable, the mouse is not designed with that usage in mind. Now let's move on to the main feature, its 12-button keypad. This has a major, major advantage over the Razer Naga and a major disadvantage. You're able to slide the pad up and down along the side of the mouse, meaning that you can place it wherever is most comfortable. This makes the mouse incredibly robust for many different hand sizes. The disadvantage, though, is the placement of the lower keys, i.e. 1, 4, and 7. They are a bit too concave to be easily pressed by your thumb. When you reach for the 1 key, it feels too mushy because of the button placement, not because of the key switches on the buttons. The equivalent keys on the Naga are comparatively more raised up, meaning that they are easier to press. Fixing this would be a small but fantastic tweak for Corsair to make in future iterations. Now, the rows of keys have alternating textures, with one row being smooth and the next one being textured. It didn't help me much as I'm used to these thumb pads from years of Anaga, but perhaps new users would find that useful. Certainly, it's not a problem. The buttons themselves have a satisfying and distinct click, albeit 1, 4, and 7 are a little bit annoying to press. The rest of the buttons on this mouse are great. Both clicks are solid, and right below the scroll wheel, there are two buttons which would raise and lower the DPI by default. It also has a very good scroll wheel. Personally, I could find no problems with its sensor's performance, and tracking was excellent on both of the surfaces that I used. Now, this mouse is RGB enabled. The default profile looks pretty damn cool, and the light next to the keypad actually changes color based on your DPI setting. Corsair software also allows for extensive customization of the RGB features and covers all of the functionality that you would expect, including custom lighting and macros. The only issue with this RGB functionality is that your profile might look a little bit strange with the mouse's yellow accents. Now, I do like the yellow, but they are actually selling a blacked out version to address that concern. It's got a braided USB cable, which is quite sturdy, but I particularly like how the connector is styled after the mouse. It's a kind of brighter yellow color. This means that it's easy to identify which port your mouse is plugged into at the back of your computer, which is just dead handy. So in conclusion, I think this is a stellar mouse. It's fantastically well built. It's got great customization options for keypad placement, and it looks brilliant. Sadly, it shoots itself in the foot with the bottom most keys on the keypad. They are too close to the body of the mouse and therefore too hard to click. If I'm playing World of Warcraft and I've got a key spell on the 1, 4, or 7 key, I don't want to have mushing uh, or any inaccuracies be a factor. And this really does leave me so torn on this mouse. While the keypad of the Naga is less flexible, I find it to be more useful. So if you can get past the keypad issue, then go with this mouse over the Naga. If you can try one of these in person and see how that feels and you're happy with it, then by all means, go ahead. It defeats the Naga handily in almost every other category. If Corsair fix this problem, then they arguably have the best MMO mouse on the market. But unfortunately for Corsair, it is a tie. And the great thing about it being a tie is there is strong competition in the market. Hopefully Corsair fix the concern that I have, and hopefully Razer are driven to improve the Naga, hopefully in the build quality area, as Razer do not have the best track record when it comes to solidly built products. 
Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments or on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.